Are you ready there, young man? Almost. Almost. All right. He has to do his hair. There we go. Hey, if you're able to, why don't you stand with us? We're going to worship God a little bit, and uh, let's give him praise today. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless? And all he wanted, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes an orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nation with truth and justice? Shines like the sun and all of his brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is a failing love. But you would take my place. my cross you lay down your life that I will be set free oh Jesus I say for all that you've done for me Hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than I believe I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes and fight for me. And I'm gonna say in the middle of the 
thunder rolls in the evening sky. The glory shines in the morning light. Oh Every good gift flows from your heart From the Father of the heavenly lights you Don't change like shifting shadows Your light shines in my heart flows Every good gift flows from your heart From the Father of the heavenly lights you Don't change like shifting shadows Your light shines in my heart flows you are the father of light. You are the author of love. You set the rhythms of time. You stretch the heavens above. The thunder rolls in the evening sky. The glory shines in the morning light. Oh God, one thing I know is you are good. The Father of the heavenly lights Don't change like shifting shadows The light shines in my heart flow Mercy, provision, healing, compassion Freedom, redemption The light shines in my heart flow Your mercy, provision, healing, compassion Freedom, redemption, your light shines in my heart flows, your mercy, the vision, healing, compassion, freedom, redemption, your light shines in my heart flows, your mercy, the vision, healing, compassion, The Father of the heavenly lights, don't change like shifting shadows. The light shines in my heart, Lord. Your mercy, provision, healing, compassion, freedom, redemption. The light shines in my heart, Lord. Your mercy, provision, healing. Passion, freedom, redemption. Light shines in my heart glows. Hallelujah. Can we just praise the Lord for a minute? Can we do that? Just our voices, lifting up our voices, our hands and our hearts to the Lord. And Jesus, we just give you praise. Because every gift, Lord Jesus, comes from you. And we praise you for those gifts, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you that you have healed us. You've saved us. You've set us free. And Lord, how could we not give you praise for that? So we lift you up, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Out upon the waters, the great unknown, the feet may fail. There I'll find you in the mysteries, the ocean steep, my faith will stand. Above the waves, in oceans rise, 
the author of that old hymn, Amazing Grace. It's a man by the name of John Newton. Some of you might know the story. He was a slave trader. And the Lord got a hold of his life in a profound way, which led him to write the lyrics that we just sang. And there's actually multiple, multiple verses of that song, Amazing Grace. And we're going to talk about the grace of the Lord later on today, but I, I also want to encourage us to know that whatever chains might be bound upon you, there's freedom in Jesus Christ today. There's freedom from addiction. There's freedom from fear. There's freedom from whatever burden you're carrying. There's freedom today because he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we know that. That's a promise that we have in Scripture. And I am so thankful for that today. So I want us to pray that God would just send his healing and freeing work upon every person who's here today and every person who's joining us here online. And uh, we have some that are sick today that need a touch from God. And, and we're just going to ask God to do all of, all of that and even more. Amen. Now, church, maybe God's leading you to pray with somebody here this morning. Maybe God's kind of put it on your heart to pray for someone. And maybe you want to go to them and just kind of just put a hand on their shoulder and just pray. And uh, I think that'd be fitting to obey the Holy Spirit's leading for us to do that here today. Uh, or maybe you know of a situation that someone's going through and you know they need some prayer today. And today you want to lift them up to the Lord. Let's do that today. So can we just make this a house of prayer right now? And some are already moving, which is fantastic. Let's pray and let's ask God right now to do his work and to do his will. Amen. Would you pray with me, Jesus? We come to you in the powerful, mighty, freeing, liberating name of Jesus today. And we ask you, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would touch all that are here who are in need of you today. We need a touch from you. We ask you, God, that you would answer every prayer. God, we ask you that you would touch every life, every home situation. God, every sick and injured and hurt body, Lord, we just pray for healing because we believe that you still do that. God, we believe that you still provide miracles. So, Lord, Move in this place, I pray. And God, move in the hearts and the lives of those that might be joining us by watching online. Lord, would you fill the room that they are at with your Holy Spirit right now? And God, that you would just minister and touch them in your mighty name. And Lord God, we agree with what the psalmist said. That we are confident that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we stand on that promise, Lord God. We stand on that promise. And may every trial in this place become a testimony of your goodness. And we thank you. And we give you praise. And we give you honor in Jesus' name. And the Lord's people said, Amen. Amen and amen. Would you give God praise across this place here today? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> praise God. 
Praise God. Well, if you haven't been already, you may be seated, and it is a joy to have you here today, and we want to welcome all of you, and uh, on this, uh, it, it's definitely fall today, right? It is fall, and uh, uh, those of you who are, how many of you are cold right now? You're, you're, you're just freezing. Okay. How many of you, you're a little hot right now, and I'm not talking about in a weird, okay, okay. All right, all right. See, it is impossible to control and make you all happy. So I just do what's cheapest and I don't touch the thermostat. So <laughs> you can always bring a coat. All right, Andy Cotton, one of our board members, uh, he has an announcement to share today. Thank you. You forgot to ask who feels just right. Okay, yeah, me too. All right, well, welcome. I guess it is fall now. Uh, this... October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so we want to give you a chance to show your appreciation. This man does so much for our church. I mean, it's just the, the time that, uh, just talking about one thing, his messages, he puts so much into that. You think about all these graphics and stuff, and you know that it doesn't always work right all the time. So he's, and he, he does a great job, even when it's not working right, he just keeps going. Just like with so many different areas of, of uh, his ministry. So we want to give you a chance to do that. You may have seen the signage in the basket when you first walked in today. We're going to give you a chance in two weeks, which happens to be October 31st, to join us after uh, morning service for some refreshments and time to meet. And you can tell him uh, also face-to-face -face, uh, how much you appreciate him while we enjoy some, uh, uh, I think we're going to have something sweet, uh, some cake. I heard somebody likes cake, so... So we'll, as we keep that in mind, we'll send out reminders on social media to, to remind you and, and uh, each Sunday coming up. So that's two weeks from now. Thank you. How's that? Is that better? Can you hear me now? Okay. So I apologize, online people. You couldn't hear anything. Probably looked like a Godzilla film is what it did. Remember those old things? Nope. Nobody does. All right. Uh, if you're a guest here today, thank you for being here. It means a lot that you would worship with us. And if you're joining us online for the first time as well, thank you so much for being here today. And while we welcome all of our guests and our online congregation today, church, let's welcome everybody here. Now, if you could do us a favor, uh, in the seat back in front of you, if you are here in person and you're new, and maybe you've never filled one of these out before, uh, go ahead and grab one, fill it out, and just uh, give us as much information as you'd like to give us, and just leave it on the chair when you're done here today. We will not stalk you or make you sell anything or get a tattoo, at least not in that order, but what we will do is just send you a quick note to say thank you, or if you're a little bit more tech savvy, as so many of you are here today, uh, you can scan this QR code, and that will take you to our online Connect card as well, which is at bcot.org slash hello, and give us as much information as you'd like to give us there, and that would be fantastic. So thank you again so much for being here today. We're excited. In less than two months, our biggest outreach of the year is taking place here at Bethel, and that is our annual giveaway. Now, if you have never seen the giveaway in action, I'm telling you, it is unlike anything you've ever seen, where we give away, literally, we give away things like uh, furniture, housewares, toys, clothes, groceries, you name it, we, we give it away. It's, it's pretty incredible. And here's how you can help us. Now, on the screen behind me, you see that we are giving away groceries. And I saw a few of you grabbing the shopping lists in the lobby. We appreciate that. If you want to grab one of those, and you can supply what goes into a bag uh, for us to distribute to everybody who comes to the giveaway on that day. Uh, actually, it's over two days now. Uh, or uh, we want to give you the green light, by the way. If you have things to donate, because we've had people say, is it okay to bring stuff? Yes, it is. So you can bring stuff to the church to donate. If it's larger, or maybe if you want to check in first to see if somebody's here 
that might be a good idea. I can tell you that every Tuesday at 6, is that right, crew? At about from 6 to 8, there's a team here that works on the giveaway. And if you'd like to donate your stuff on that day, you can. If it works easier for you to do it on another day, you can do that as well. Uh, all we ask is that it uh, be gently used. Um, if, <laughs> if it's a couch, uh, let's not have bed bugs in it or cigarette burns, right? Okay, that's not something we really want to give away. If it's a guitar, you know, make sure all, all the strings are on it. You never, you never know. Okay, so things like that. Uh, but we will, we will take it and we will give it away. It's amazing, church, but we've given away in the past. Um, refrigerators, uh, couches. I think a couple years ago was the year of the couch, and we had like a thousand couches of just... So uh, however God leads you, we would really, really appreciate that. So thank you very much. Also, we are accepting your receipts from Acme. We are part of the Acme Fresh Market Give Back program, and there is a jar out in the lobby. And if you'd like to turn in your Acme receipts, uh, we are part of their program, and they send us uh, a check uh, to the church just based on you turning in your receipts. And so we appreciate that very much. Uh, million, maybe billions of dollars this year is what we anticipate that we will receive from this campaign. So thank you very much. All right. Uh, our offering time is upon us. And again, I thank you so much for how you have responded so well to um, just this call to give. Um, I don't think giving is a gift I think giving is part of our discipleship. As we grow closer to the Lord, uh, we become more and more and more giving. Uh, not just of our money, but of our time, our talent, and our treasure. And your faithfulness has been um, mind-blowing. And uh, to see that dozens of students from Kent State and the University of Akron, for example, were blessed by your giving in such a way that we provided over $1,300 worth of scholarships to uh, Kent State and, and Akron Chi Alpha so that they go on their, on their retreat. That's just incredible. And so we thank you so much for that. Um, I'll tell you again, every gift has a story. So every time you give, every time you donate, there's a story that God is making and that God is developing. And I thank you for that. Your giving is why we can do things like the giveaway. And so I want us to pray. And Wayne's going to bless us in song uh, during this time. Perhaps you would like to uh, participate this morning in person in giving. And we have a giving box in the back right by our, our tech booth over there. Some of you like to use this time to go to our website and, and give through that portal there. And you can certainly do that. And others have mailed checks to our P.O. box Whichever way, we're going to ask God to bless the gift and the giver and to bless every financial situation that's represented here. So would you join me in prayer as we enter into a time of giving? Lord, I thank you. I praise you. God, you gave us your one and only son. You demonstrated to us, Lord God, what it means to give. And now, Lord, I pray that uh, as we give, Lord, take our gifts, take our offerings, take our tithe, and Lord, use it for your glory and make us wise stewards of it. I pray for the finances of those that are in this church today. God, that you meet every need, every single need, I pray that you would meet. And God, if somebody is, is facing a crisis today, I pray that you would provide them in an in incredible way. And Lord, I'll thank you. We pray now that you would bless Wayne as he sings and bless our time together in your name. Amen.
I see the work of your hands, galaxy spinning a heavenly dance, oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming. I hear the sound of your voice, all at once it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh God. All that you are is so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. God, I run into your arms, unashamed because of mercy. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. I know the power of your cross, forgive and free forever you'll be my God and all that you are is so overwhelming I delight myself in you in the glory of your presence I'm overwhelmed I'm overwhelmed by Oh God, there is no one more beautiful. You are beautiful. God, you are the most beautiful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Oh God, there is no one more wonderful. You are wonderful. God, you are the most wonderful. You are glorious. You are glorious. Oh, God, there is no one more glorious. You are glorious. God, you are the most glorious. I delight myself in you. In the glory of your presence, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. God, I run into your arms, unashamed because of mercy. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. You are the most beautiful. There we go. All right. Can you hear me now? 
Are we good? We're getting there? All right. It's been one of the mornings, folks. I tell you, it's crazy. It's crazy. So Jonathan and I found out on the way here that the Clacos were not feeling well, and so we, uh, we kind of scrambled a little bit for worship, and then I'm unplugging things, and, and, uh, and, and, but, but there's donuts somewhere in the building, <laughs> and that makes everything so much better. So, so thankful for that. All right. And I'm thankful that the Lord's brought us here today. Amen? Amen. All right. We are going to continue the series that we began uh, a few weeks ago. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I think God's really been speaking to us in a pretty powerful way as we've been looking at uh, what we call very short stories where uh, we're doing a series on the parables of Jesus, on the parables of Jesus. Uh, what Jesus did to make his point, Jesus was a master communicator, by the way. And what he did was, at times, to try to get his point across even better, he would tell stories to illustrate uh, his message. And uh, there are about 40 plus of these parables in the Gospels. And we're not going to cover all of them in this series. But uh, I, I've chosen a few that I think God could use to speak to us today. This morning uh, could be an interesting topic for some of us here. Uh, I've titled this message, Grace or Disgrace? Grace or Disgrace? And we're in Matthew chapter 18. So if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 18, you can go ahead and do that right now uh, or click there, uh, whatever is easiest. I will have all my scriptures today on the screen. So if you uh, don't have a copy of God's word near you, you can certainly follow on the screen as well. Grace or disgrace. Some of the songs that we've sung today have talked about the grace and the mercy of the Lord. That was very intentional to lead us into our message here today. Uh, we, <laughs> we as a people are thrilled when we receive mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Can you say amen to that? Right? I mean, we're thankful for it. We sang about it. Um, yet, it could be a challenging thing to give mercy and grace and forgiveness. And Jesus tells a story that talks about just that. And I want us to go there today. So uh, if you're able to, uh, would you stand with me in honor of God's word as we read this together? We're in Matthew 18. We're going to start in verse 23. And we're going to go to verse 35. All right? If you're there, say amen. Amen. If you're not there, say oh my. All right, just checking. Okay, here we go. All right, now here's the words of Jesus. You ready? Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. And the servant's master took pity on him. He canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, He found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. And his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, 
they were outraged and they went and told their master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Lighthearted message today, huh? But it's an important one. So let's pray. God, sometimes your word uh, really kind of gets in our business, and I anticipate that this will be the case for a lot of us, and uh, all of us actually. And, and Lord, I pray that we would be receptive and responsive to this. And God, that you would do a, uh, an amazing work of grace and mercy, and that we would demonstrate that as well. So speak to us through your word, I pray. In Jesus' name, and we all said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I tell you, I I think that this is a major issue for the church, capital C. I'm not talking just Bethel Church. But for the church, capital C, for people who call themselves followers of Jesus Christ, I believe that potentially this could be a really huge issue. We are all about Jesus forgiving us of our sins, and we're thankful for that. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a bit. But at times, I've met people who have been serving Jesus for quite some time, and yet they refuse to extend the same kind of grace that they receive themselves. Now, the setting for this parable is interesting because in Matthew 18, Jesus is talking about how to deal with conflict between people or among people, especially those who call themselves followers of the Lord. And then there's a part where Peter approaches Jesus in Matthew 18, starting in verse 21. So it's just a few verses prior. And here's how this goes. Peter came to Jesus and he asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven? And Jesus answered, and I know some translations will have different uh, interpretations of this. In the NIV, it says, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. The King James says 70 times 7. Either way, whether it's uh, 49 or 490, that's a lot of grace and a lot of forgiveness. Can we agree on that? Amen? And so after he gives this instruction to Peter, I mean, Peter's looking for a cap. It's like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm keeping score here. I've forgiven her three times. I forgave him four. They're almost out. Seven, Jesus? And, and, and Jesus says, uh, no, Peter. Uh, you, you, in fact, for those of us who choose to keep score, put your scorebook away. Throw away your receipts that you want to cash in every time somebody does something wrong to you or every time you can nail somebody. Just those don't belong in the heart of a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to get to that even more in just a little bit because here's the deal. I want, I want us to not only experience the grace of God in our lives, but I also want us to experience the freedom of giving grace and giving mercy and giving forgiveness to somebody else. It has been said, and I agree, that choosing not to forgive is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Choosing not to forgive is like drinking poison and then waiting on the other person to die. That's what unforgiveness does. So the question today is grace or disgrace? Which 
will we experience? As I read this scripture, it looks like both options are very viable. And the choice is really ours. So what I want to do today is look at three parts of this parable today. Three parts of this parable, and I've kind of broken them down and organized them so we can kind of keep track here. Uh, Let me give you the first part. Uh, I would identify this first part of the parable as what I would call grace requested. Grace that is requested. When you ask for mercy. When you ask for grace. Now again, Jesus is giving a very interesting comparison between two men. Two men who had two different debts. And I want to talk about the debts that were represented in this story, but also the debts that we have that we need God's mercy from. As we look at the first servant, look at verse 24 again. It says, as he began the settlement, so he got the master, and he's got people that owe him money. His own servants owe him money. And it says, as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Now, Because we're in the 21st century, and because maybe a lot of us don't know how much gold is really worth, we may not understand that this is a significant amount of money. So I kind of trace this a little bit in my my studies and in my commentaries. Get this, in today's language, that debt would equal, you ready for this, 20 years of wages. 20 years. This man had a debt to his master of 20, what we would call 20 years worth of your pay, whatever that is. And some of you, I see the wheels turning and you're trying to do the math and it's just freaking you out. And that's what this man owed his master. The second man also had what I would call a significant debt. Again, look at verse 28 now. 28 says, But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Really nice guy. Uh, He began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. Again, today's language. The first servant, hundred bags of gold, 20 years of wages. The second servant, uh, he he had a debt of 100 silver coins. Commentators say that this would be close to 100 days wages. Now, both debts were incredibly different. But how many of you would agree that in all honesty, both of these debts are significant. Would you say amen? If somebody came to you and they said, hey, you owe me money that is equal to about three and a half months of your pay. (laughs) Well, I guess the IRS does that already. But but if somebody came to you, (laughs) boy, that was, oh boy. Shouldn't have said that, but that was... If the IRS is watching, we love you and we are praying for you and don't, don't audit me. All right, so... But if somebody came up to you and said, you owe me 100 days worth of wages, that would be staggering. Now imagine 20 years worth. And that was the situation, that was the debts, the debt situation that was owed by both of these men. Again, both debts were different, but both debts were significant. I'm speaking to people today who have needed forgiveness for different levels of debt in here. 
And because of that, we need to take a particular direction. If you have a debt of sin, I'm not talking about your mortgage today, I'm not talking about your credit card debt, but what I'm talking about is your spiritual debt. See, each and every one of us, we have a debt, a debt of sin that we could not possibly pay back ourselves. Every single one of us. And so there's a direction that each of us need to take. If we're going to have this kind of a debt, then we need to take a particular direction. And before we go any further, as far as what happened negatively and what may have happened badly, I want you to know this, that both men were unable to pay the debt that they owed. Both men unable to pay the debt that they owed. The one who owed 20 years worth of salary couldn't pay it. The one that owed 100 days worth of salary couldn't pay it. And again, likewise, each of us, because of sin, that has created a debt that each and every one of us have to have canceled. We cannot pay that ourselves. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us that all of us have sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. There is a sin debt that every human being has. Well, I'm a pretty good person. You're not good enough. Well, I try to make good choices. That's awesome, but that's not good enough. In fact, the Bible says that the wages are what we deserve for our sin, Romans 6, 23, the wages of that sin, what we deserve, the, the cost, the price of that is death. The wages of that sin is death. Lord, how could I possibly pay the debt that I owe? For my sin. Ephesians chapter 2, Paul describes it this way for the first five verses. Look, look at these verses. He says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following his desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. When we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace that you have been saved. Paul goes on to say, I don't have it on the screen, but Paul goes on to say, it is by grace you've been saved and that none of yourselves, not of works, so that nobody can boast about it. You are saved by grace, grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So let's, let's look at what they both did correctly. They both pleaded for forgiveness of their debt. They both, <laughs> church bells, that's, that's awesome. They both pleaded for forgiveness for their debt. Romans 10, verse 9, says, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that he rose from the dead, we will be saved. Friend, listen to me. You cannot be forgiven unless you ask Hear me again. You cannot receive forgiveness from God unless you ask. That's all you need to do, but you must do that. The idea, and, and, and this is what concerns me now, the 20th and 21st century American Christian seems to think 
that they can be at a right place with God and still have sin in their hearts that they will not walk away from. And if you're saying, well, pastor, this is kind of old time what you're saying. Actually, all this is is Bible is what I'm saying. Because it is that sin that will separate us from God. That's why Jesus died on the cross to begin with. See, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I could not pay the price for my sin. I could not pay the debt of my sin. Sin leaves me spiritually bankrupt. But Jesus, Jesus paid that debt for me by dying on the cross for me. So that now, if I confess with my mouth that he is Lord, and if I believe in my heart that he rose from the dead, because of his work on the cross, that debt is canceled, and I am saved, and I am free. Is it any wonder, you've heard me talk about this before, is it any wonder when Jesus hung on the cross, and he uttered those words, it is finished, and and it was actually in Greek, it was actually a, a business term that literally meant, Are you ready for this? The debt has been paid in full. When people would pay their invoices, when they would pay off their accounts, the merchant would mark that bill with the same term, tetelestai. The debt has been paid in full. When Jesus hung on the cross and he paid the price for our sins, he literally said, the debt has been paid in full. I had a debt that I could not pay. He paid a debt that he did not owe. I am thankful today that Jesus is the one who cancels my debt of sin. Can you say amen to that today? Today, if you're not serving God, I want you to hear me today. It is no accident that you're hearing this. If you're not serving God, if you're not right between you and God, today is the day. Today is the day to say, Lord, I plead with you to forgive me of my sins. I plead with you to cancel the debt of sin that is in my life. And that, ladies and gentlemen, we prayed for miracles earlier in this place. But that is the greatest miracle that could take place in any kind of room, in any place in this world, on this Lord's day, is for someone to find Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's what moves me. That's what drives me, is to see people who are lost Find Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you need him today, if you need to get right with God, he is calling you. He is calling you. You cannot pay that debt yourself. Jesus has paid it for him, for you. Now, just ask him. You cannot be forgiven unless you ask him. So, they both ask. They both requested grace. But now this story takes an interesting turn. Because the first one who owed 20 years worth of wages by our count, he received a cancellation of his debt just like that. But when he found somebody whose debt could not even compare to his, his reaction to that person was way different. We saw grace requested, but what happened when grace is refused? We saw grace requested, but what happens when grace is refused? Now, look, look how this goes down. Verses 28 through 30, but when that servant went out, this is, this is right after. This is right after he's been forgiven of his debt. You with me? Okay. He found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. And his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. Same response that he gave to his master, this man is giving to his fellow servant. Verse 30, but he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. Wow. 
This man received forgiveness, again by our count, for 20 years worth of wages, the same amount, but would not extend forgiveness for three and a half months worth. This man received an incredible amount of grace, but he was unwilling to give any. And this is what I fear can trickle in to the 21st century church. Those of us who have received forgiveness and grace and mercy will sing about it, we'll teach about it, we'll preach about it, we love to read about it, we'll praise God for it. But when it's time to give forgiveness to someone else, we won't do it. Now, I've been around a while. I've been doing ministry for a while, 30 plus years. And I've heard, I've heard uh, rationale for not forgiving somebody. I've heard rationale that maybe sounds like this. I think they'll get off easy and they'll probably do it again, whatever they did to you. They hurt me so bad that I cannot forgive them. What they did was horrible, and they shouldn't be left off the hook. It just wouldn't be right to forgive them. They don't, they don't deserve it. They haven't even repented of it. They don't seem to care one way or the other if they're forgiven or not. Or I was just hurt too deeply. So I can't let this go. See, now it gets heavy. Because we seek God's grace for a debt that is far greater than anything that you would, you would ever face here on earth. And we gladly receive that and accept that grace and mercy from Jesus. But now, when it comes to our relationships on earth, now we're hesitant Let me, uh, let me say something to you. It is not your responsibility as to whether somebody changes their life or not. It is not your responsibility. If you've been hurt by somebody, it is not your responsibility that they become a better person, that they say, oh, I was wrong. It's not your responsibility for them to accept forgiveness from you. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility, I'm going to cover this at the end, and I'm almost done. <laughs> Some of you are saying, when's the end coming? <laughs> but none of what I just rattled off, none of that is your responsibility. Now let me pause. There's a difference between forgiveness and trust. You are called to forgive freely, but it would be unwise to trust everybody, no matter what. Okay. If I hand you the keys to my car, and you ram my car into a tree because you were texting on your phone, I can forgive you but I ain't giving you my keys again. <laughs> well, you're supposed to forgive. I do forgive you, but I don't trust you to take my car anywhere. In fact, I would not give you a Hot Wheels car at this point. <laughs> so what has to happen? Trust, trust has to be earned. 
catch the difference. Forgiveness is a gift. Forgiveness is given. Trust is earned. My son's birthday is this Wednesday. When I give him a gift, I'm not going to say, okay, you got to earn this, Bubba. It's a gift that I give him. That's what forgiveness is. It is a gift that God has given us and what we give to other people. But if you've been wronged, if you've been hurt, it's okay. In fact, I will tell you it's healthy for that person to build their trust back with you. And that may take a while. And that's okay. Because you know what? That's part of the healing process. I don't know who this is for. But some of us need to quit opening ourselves up to more hurt and more hurt and more hurt because we're extending trust to people that have no business getting your trust. That didn't go over as well as I thought it would, so I'm going to try it again. (laughs) You could avoid a lot of hurt if you are selective with who you trust. And if someone's wronged you, let them build that trust back. And, it, and if, if, you, if you were the person doing the hurt, okay, you need to realize that if you violated a relationship or if you mishandled something that someone trusted you with or if you've hurt somebody, you got some work to do. You've got, to, and you can be forgiven, great, but you ain't getting the keys. Not for a while. Not until we take away your phone and get you some driver's ed. Do you hear what I'm saying? So it is not your responsibility. As a person who gives forgiveness, it is not your responsibility for the life change in the person you're forgiving. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So don't try to do His job. You do your job. And your job is to forgive. Mm. And that, I'm, I'm going to close with this. Grace's response. We've seen grace requested. Then we saw grace refused. So when grace is refused, how does the giver of grace respond to that? See, because here's... <laughs> Here's what concerns me. There are people that will hear a message like this and they'll say, oh, well, he doesn't know what I've been through. That doesn't apply to me. It does apply to you. See, because the enemy might not have you in the bondage of addiction, but he can certainly strap you down with the bondage of unforgiveness. And the chain that you may need to be set free from may not have anything to do with a drug, with with any kind of alcohol, with any kind of habit. But the chain that you may need to be set free from is the chain of unforgiveness. And to be quite honest with you, that chain wraps itself around the hearts of more Christians than we care to believe. Way more, way more than the chain of addiction. So look at the verses, and then I'm going to close. Verse 31 says, When the other servants saw what happened, this is after the choke slam and the... So when his peers, when they saw what had happened, they were outraged. And they went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant. He said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? Just as I had on you. And in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. And then Jesus says, because the story's done here, and Jesus says, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you, unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Now that's heavy. That's heavy. 
See, there were some really severe repercussions to the lack of grace and the lack of forgiveness that was given, or I should say not given by the first servant. Serious. The guy was hauled off the jail to be tortured. Not the ending he was hoping for. But the Bible tells us that likewise, there are some serious repercussions to us if we choose not to forgive. Look at the book of James, chapter 2. This verse says, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Look at that again. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Jesus is giving instructions on how to pray. And in Mark chapter 11, verse 25, he says, When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So that tells me that an obstacle to us receiving forgiveness of sins is choosing not to forgive the people that are around us. And we just read verse 35. In Matthew 18, Jesus said, Look, this is how my heavenly Father will treat you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. Hmm. Do you know that there are earthly organizations? Get get this. Ready? I'm closing. I'm closing. (laughs) Famous last words, but I'm closing. Johns Hopkins, okay? The big three in our country, medical places, you got the Cleveland Clinic right here in our neck of the woods, you got the Mayo Clinic, and you got Johns Hopkins, okay? So Johns Hopkins, one of the big three, they say this, studies have found that the act of forgiveness can reap huge rewards for your health. It lowers the risk of a heart attack These aren't even Christian people. Listen to this. It improves your cholesterol levels. It improves your sleep. It reduces pain. It reduces blood pressure. It reduces levels of anxiety, depression, and stress. Their research at Johns Hopkins says this, that there is an increase in health as you get older, as there is an increase in forgiveness as you get older. And Jesus has been saying this for centuries. So how do we do this, Pastor? How do we respond to this? Some of you, the person that you need to forgive might not even be alive anymore. They may not even live near you at all. They may have nothing to do with you. Okay. But you can still forgive them from your heart. You can lift that burden of unforgiveness and just tell God, Lord, I forgive them. And that that may be hard to flesh out and live out. But I do know this, that God never gives us a command in the scripture that he will not qualify us to do. I should say that again. God will never give you a command in scripture that he will not give you the ability to do with him. But if there, same chapter, Matthew 18, nobody likes to read this. Starting in verse 15. Jesus again is talking and he says, if your brother or your sister sins, go point out their fault just between the two of you. Okay, so we don't post it on Facebook. Okay. All right. We, 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 we don't do some passive aggressive posting on, on Twitter or Facebook. I'm glad I'm not like people who do this stand did my deed. No, you didn't. No, you, in fact, you just made it worse. 
So if somebody sins against you, okay, against you, go to them, just the two of you. And don't go to them and say, you know what? <laughs> you are a sinner, S-I-N-N-E-R, you. And uh, you are, are just, you know, tell Judas I said hi. You know, I, you know. <laughs> So you, <laughs> so you got to approach this with the right spirit. Amen? Amen? Because sometimes people use these things just to, you did this and you did that and you did this and you did that and goodbye. The object of this entire section is restoration. Jesus even went as far in another portion of Scripture saying that if you are worshiping and presenting your gift at the altar, if you are reminded that somebody has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and go be reconciled to your brother first. Then return and offer your gift. It's incredible that Jesus actually placed a higher value, a higher value on restoration between his children than even worshiping him. Let's continue. If they listen to you, you've won them over. If they will not listen, take one or two others along. Again, that's not your 2,000 Facebook friends. <laughs> take somebody spiritually mature with you, I would recommend. So that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now, this is Jesus talking here. This isn't me. Look at the next verse. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. We don't see this in the 21st century church. We wouldn't even have to see step three if we would do step one or step two. It continues. Truly, I tell you, and, and this verse gets so misquoted. Oh. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. In other words, what you agree upon as you restore your relationship, you do that on earth, heaven sees that, and they agree with it, and they put their blessing on it as well. God puts his blessing on that. Whatever you bind and whatever you loose on earth will be bound and loosed in heaven. God takes this very seriously. And again, you might say, they're getting off too easy. They hurt me too deeply. They, they, they're not even going to change. They haven't repented. They don't plan to repent. They're still being jerks. They're still trying to hurt me. None of that is your responsibility. Do you know what your responsibility is? Your responsibility is this, to extend grace and to forgive. Let God deal with the rest. You extend grace let trust be rebuilt, but you give grace, let trust be rebuilt, restore your relationships, and God will bless that, and he'll take it from there. So how do we respond to this? <laughs> your response to this is probably twofold today. One, if you need the grace of God in your life, if you need Jesus to forgive you of your sin, that sin debt, today is the day that he will forgive you and he'll cancel that debt, which, by the way, is way deeper and more pricey than 20 years' worth of wages. So today is the day for you to beg, to call upon the Lord for him to forgive you. But I also speak to people today who need grace to be extended to somebody that you hurt. And you've kept the pain of that. You've kept the anger of that. You've had hate in your heart for how you've been treated. And I am not diminishing that. 
So please hear me. God doesn't diminish that either. But here's your responsibility. Forgive. Extend grace. The same kind of grace that you received from Jesus, extend grace. And then let God, let God do the rest. And trust me when I tell you, if you do this God's way, he can do a way better job of this than you or I can. Let God change him. Let God fix it. And if need be, let God take him out. (laughs) You think I'm kidding. Whatever has to take place, let God. Let God do it. Can you say amen? Amen. Stand with me if you would, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Did we get anything out of this this morning? Hallelujah. I, uh, I want to challenge you today that if you need God's forgiveness and His grace, that you would call for it today. And I'm not going to embarrass you, but I want to pray for you today. So could we bow our heads? And uh, close our eyes. And we're just making this a time of prayer. You ready? Uh, you'll say, Pastor, I, uh, I'm in need of forgiveness. I need that grace from God that you talked about. And today, I need to be made right with the Lord. Uh, if that is you, God is knocking on the door of your heart And if you need him to forgive you today, no one's looking around, but I'm going to ask you to express that to me simply with an upraised hand. Raise it up and put it right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands are going up. I need the grace of God. I need his forgiveness. I need him to cancel the sin debt. Are there others here today? You need that from the Lord. The response to this next question, I will not even ask for a show of hands because it could be deeply personal, and I get that. But today, if you need to forgive somebody and to extend grace, not receive it like we just asked, but to extend grace and to extend forgiveness and to allow trust to be rebuilt, then today, I want to give you a chance to talk to the Lord I want to give you a chance to walk that out. Because to be quite honest with you, the response to that, that may not even take place today. That, that, it may start today, but that may take place tomorrow. That might have to take place multiple times this week. But don't drink that poison any longer. Not any longer. Allow Jesus, allow Jesus to bring healing into your heart so that you can extend the grace that's been given to you by our Lord. Do not allow your spiritual life to be destroyed because of this. Forgive. So I'm going to say a prayer. And if you need to spend some time between you and God, I'm going to encourage you to do that. Make an altar somewhere here in this room. Maybe you want to come to the front and kneel and pray or stand and pray. Maybe you want to uh, make an altar at your seat. Whatever the case, we're going to make this a place of prayer. And I'm praying that grace would just abound in this place. And when you're done with God and he's done with you, walk out of here with the victory that he totally intends for you to have here today. This first part of the prayer, I'm going to ask everyone to repeat this prayer after me, if you would please do so. Let's do this. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for your grace and for your mercy. I ask you, forgive me of all of my sins. Give to me the grace that I don't deserve. And make me 
a brand new person. Thank you for your freedom through your grace. In Jesus' name. And now, Lord, I pray for those who need to extend grace to somebody else. God, I pray. I pray that you would heal hearts, that you would ultimately heal relationships. God, that you would heal spiritual lives. God, I ask you that with the degree of grace that we have received from you, we would try to extend that same amount of forgiveness, that same amount of mercy, that same amount of grace to the people that have hurt us. So Lord, I pray for healing as we forgive. And God, I'll thank you. Meet with your people now, I pray, Jesus, in your name. Amen. If you need to pray, do so right now. If God's released you, you can consider yourself dismissed. God bless you. Let's walk this out with the Lord today.